Hi students, welcome to PhD Jobs and Admission. This is Gauri. So in this video, I am going to teach you about research methodology subject of PhD entrance test at Anna University. So in today's session, I am going to teach you about probability and non-probability sampling techniques by using MCQs. So both of these sampling techniques are really very important uh, for research methodology. And as well, on both of these sampling techniques, you will be asking two to three questions each uh, year in PhD entrance test at Anna University and that's why after viewing this session you will understand exactly what are these techniques what is the difference between them and different types under which and as well the meaning of them okay so students before starting this session I want to tell you that global online team provides you complete course on research methodology subject because at Anna University there is a PhD entrance test and in that test there will be asking 25% questions on research methodology topic itself and that's why by using this course you can all guaranteed qualify PhD entrance test by scoring more marks in research methodology section okay so in this course basically global online team provides you full syllabus video lectures under which theory and MCQs both are available you will get full syllabus notes and mock tests you will get more than 1500 MCQs revision PDF you will get study material which is available in both the languages that is Hindi and English okay so students we have basically 10 mock tests like this and each mock test contains 40 MCQs and that's why overall you can solve 400 MCQs in each mock uh, you know in the, all the mock tests and by the use of this revision PDF you can all basically solve all the you know revision uh, mcqs in a single pdf you can revise all the topics in a single pdf and guaranteed you will get 80 percent mcqs uh, from this pdf only out of 100 percent mcqs in research methodology section of phd entrance test okay so students if you want to buy this course then you can either download the global online app from the play, play store for that i have given the link in the description box of this video or else you can contact me on this whatsapp numbers okay so the course fees are only 699 rupees which are really very less okay so in this uh, such low fees global online team provides you step by step guidance okay at your phd admission or uh, you know at uh, anna university and as well global online team gives you 100% passing guarantee that you can guaranteed qualify the PhD entrance test okay so now let us start with our today's session now the question one is sampling is advantageous as it dash so why students sampling is advantageous why we do the sampling in research okay so because it saves time because it helps in capital saving because both one and two that is saves time and helps in capital saving or increases accuracies okay so students your correct answer is three that is both saves time and helps in capital saving so first of all students there is a target population and every researcher wants to study the target population but it includes lot of participants and that's why no one can study lot of participants in a minimum amount of time and that's why we do the sampling so that we can you know select uh, you know samples from the target population which will be the representative of the target population right and basically sampling is advantageous because it saves our time and as well it helps in capital saving because sampling does not include that much uh, you know amount of uh, people and that's why we don't need that much amount of funding for doing the data collection and that's why it helps in capital saving as well that's why your correct answer should be three okay next is which of the following are popular complex random sampling designs so which of these are the popular complex random sampling designs so random sampling designs are basically nothing but uh, the probability ran probability sampling techniques okay and under under this sampling technique a uh, researcher actually randomly selects the participants from the target population so let us see here different options systematic sampling then stratified sampling then simple sampling then cluster sampling then basic sampling so students your correct answer over here should be two that is a b and d okay because a b and d these are the complex random sampling designs okay complex means uh, there is many steps and it is basically opposite than simple random sampling so let me explain you why so within the systematic sampling technique uh, there is a 
यू नो हेट्रोजीनस पॉप्युलेशन और होमोजीनस पॉप्युलेशन एंड इन दिस पॉप्युलेशन व्हाट वी डू वी एक्चुअली हैव अ फॉर एग्जांपल फाइनाइट पॉप्युलेशन फॉर एग्जांपल आई हैव हंड्रेड नंबर ऑफ पीपल इन अ पॉप्युलेशन एंड आई नीड टू सिलेक्ट द सैंपल्स सो व्हाट आई विल डू ओवर हियर आई विल डिवाइड दिस हंड्रेड नंबर ऑफ पीपल इन टू इक्वल इंटरवल्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल आई विल डू वन टू टेन इंटरवल then 11 to 20 interval so like this i will do up to 100 uh, number interval okay then uh, first of all i will select randomly any number from this 1 to 10 for example if i select 7 number then in every next interval i am going to select seventh number so for example between 11 to 20 i will select 17 between or uh, 21 to 30 i am going to select 27 so firstly i am going to randomly select seven number then after that in each interval i am going to select the nth number okay all of you getting and this is called as a systematic sampling but it is random sampling design because at the first time i am going to select the sample randomly over here okay and that's why it is called as the complex random sampling design because here we are going to you know do lots of um, procedures and as well we are doing going to do the procedures by using randomly selecting the sample and that's why this is complex random sampling design next is stratified sampling now stratified sampling actually is done when there is obviously the heterogeneous population whenever population includes you know lots of uh, characteristics of people okay or people which have the uh, lots of characteristics i mean to say different characteristics so for example here i have heterogeneous population so what i am going to do is i am going to divide this population into different subgroups for example s1 subgroup s2 s3 like that and i am going to select the samples randomly from each subgroup and after that finally i'll make a sample okay this would be the stratified sampling technique so here as well i am going to select the samples randomly and that's why this is random sampling design and over here as well i am going to use different kind of procedures okay and that's why this is complex random sampling design okay now next is cluster sampling so within the cluster sampling again there is a lots of amount of uh, you know population and basically it is heterogeneous population and again here i am going to you know divide the whole population into different subgroups like s1 s2 s3 but over here i am going to select whole subgroup from these subgroups randomly for example i will select randomly s1 subgroup i will select randomly s4 subgroup okay and then finally i will make a sample okay so this is called as the cluster sampling and that's why this is as well the complex random sampling design and within the simple sampling there is only the way that we are only selecting the samples randomly from the whole population this is the only one process or step we are going to do in simple a uh, random sampling technique and that's why this is only the simple random sampling technique not a complex random sampling technique and that's why your correct answer should be 2 over here that is a b d only because over here systematic sampling stratified sampling and cluster sampling all of these are the complex random sampling designs okay next random sampling is helpful as it is dash so why random sampling design is helpful because it is reasonably accurate because it is free from personal biases because it is an economical method of data collection because all of the above so students as i have told you earlier in the question 2 that within the random sampling technique we are going to select the samples randomly from the whole population and that's why it is reasonably accurate because we are going to select the samples randomly so we don't know exactly 
uh, you know whether uh, we are uh, you know going toward the specific characteristic or not basically here we can uh, you know select all the kinds of people from the uh, you know target population okay which include lots of characteristics and that's why it is reasonably accurate and as well here there is no any kind of biases that a researcher can do because here researcher don't know the identity of the participants and that too researcher is selecting the samples randomly from the target population right and that's why it is bias free so again this is one of the uh, you know advantages of it and as well this is the economical method of data collection because uh, here a researcher Uh, can target the lots of um, number of population uh, and as well it saves the time it saves the uh, capital as well okay and that's why this is the economical method of data collection so this is again the helpful thing of it and that's why your correct answer should be four that is all of the above okay next that dash is a preferred sampling method for the population with finite size so from these uh, sampling techniques which is the preferred sampling technique for the population with finite size so whether it is systematic sampling whether it is purposive sampling whether it is cluster sampling or whether it is area sampling so as i have told you earlier in this video that in the systematic sampling technique we know the size of the population that means the size of the population is finite over here and that's why we are able to you know uh, make the intervals of the whole population like 1 to 10 10 to 20 and that's why whenever the population size is finite then our preferred sampling method is systematic sampling okay which is a random sampling technique now what is purposive sampling so purposive sampling is the non probability sampling technique because here researcher don't use the uh, random sampling method technique so here researcher don't randomly select the participants from the target population here researcher have a specific kind of uh, you know a uh, characteristic in mind and based upon that characteristic only researcher selects the you know preferred participants okay and that's why here you know researcher don't uh, you know uh, don't understand exactly the population is finite or not actually whether the population is finite or infinite it does not matter in this case okay because researcher only want those participants who has the uh you know specific characteristics that researcher want in his or her study okay that's why this option gets eliminated now cluster sampling so as i have told you earlier that within the cluster sampling the population is heterogeneous and as well you know there is lots of number of people under the population so maybe the population includes uh, you know infinite number of people and that's why this also gets eliminated area sampling is again the sub type of cluster sampling only as i have told you earlier within the cluster sampling we are going to divide the target population into subgroups like s1 s2 s3 and we are going to randomly select these subgroups okay and here these subgroups are basically the areas i mean to say geographical areas for example within india i want to do some study regarding geographical areas so i will do the Uh, subgroups like maharashtra will be my sub uh, my first subgroup then rajasthan will be second subgroup like that so i am going to make the subgroups based upon the state and i am going to select the uh, each and every subgroup randomly over here okay and this is nothing but the area sampling and here as well you can understand that we don't know the size of the population here the population size is infinite actually okay like in cluster sampling and that's why this option gets eliminated so your correct answer is systematic sampling next which one is called non probability sampling so here they have given us different types of sampling or uh, techniques and we need to identify the type of non probability sampling technique so whether it is quota sampling or uh, whether it is cluster sampling whether it is systematic sampling or whether it is stratified sampling so students now if you read these uh, sampling techniques then you will understand that cluster sampling is the random sampling 
then systematic sampling is again random sampling stratified is again random sampling so all of these options get eliminated and that's why your correct answer is quota sampling so quota sampling is the non probability sampling because within the quota sampling a researcher selects the participants we, uh, who has the specific characteristics and that's why here all of the samples selected has the a uh, specific common characteristics okay we share basically the you know specific common characteristics only and that's why this is the non probability sampling technique next which of the following sampling technique is appropriate to study the prevalence of aids amongst male and female uh, in india in 1976 1986 then 1996 and 2006 so which of the sampling technique would you use okay whenever you need to study the prevalence of aids against male and female candidates in india in the year 1976 1986 1996 2006 so students you will go for systematic sampling so let me explain why so within the systematic sampling we know the size of the population right which is finite so now here researcher wants to understand the prevalence of aids right amongst male and female candidates in india and as well here it has mentioned some years like 1976 1986 1996 and 2006 so each and every year india announces the population of the people in india in that year right so for example researcher knows the population size of india in 1976 year as well 1986 year 1996 year and 2006 year so what researcher will do now researcher over here now you know make a group of people okay and he will now you know categorize all the target population between different intervals so he will first of all make the intervals of year 1976 then he will make the intervals of year 1986 of 1996 and of 2006 year then after that he will randomly choose the sample okay uh, in the first interval then after that he will choose the samples every nth interval in the subsequent intervals and finally he will make a proper sample okay finally and and then accordingly he will study by using this sample only so why researcher will follow this uh, sampling technique because from this sampling technique researcher can reach both the types of gender like male and female and as well researcher can study each and every year okay like 76 86 96 and 2006 okay and that's why he will be able to target each and every uh, year and as well each and every gender and that's why he uh, here the study will be more accurate because here he he is addressing you know most of the accurate sample okay and that's why he can use such sampling technique and this sampling technique will saves the time of the researcher so within the quota sampling uh, researcher uh, actually uses the particular characteristic uh, of uh, you know people and accordingly or uh, he select that uh, kind of people who has that characteristic but over here researcher don't know exactly who has aids and who has not that's why this sampling technique won't be useful over here within cluster sampling technique basically researcher what does he he actually you know randomly select the uh, subgroups from the uh, target population but over here the target population is not actually infinite it is finite and this technique as well won't be useful when the stratified uh, random sampling researcher makes the subgroups and randomly then select the samples but actually this is the uh, useful but this is not preferred sampling technique because systematic sampling technique will be more preferred than stratified random sampling so this again gets eliminated that's why your correct answer should be 3 which is systematic sampling okay 
which one of the following principles is not applicable to sampling now here they have given certain principles of sampling techniques and which is the principle which is not applicable to sampling technique so whether it is sample units must be clearly defined whether it is sampling units must be dependent on each other whether it is same units of sample should be used throughout the study whether it is sample units must be chosen in a systematic or objective manner so your correct answer should be 2 because sample units must not be dependent on each other when sample units are dependent on each other then that sampling technique would be unethical and as well it would be biased okay because the sample units are dependent on each other okay and that's why this is the principle which is not applicable to sampling sample units must be clearly defined yes this is one of the principle which is applicable to sampling as well same units of sample should be used throughout the study when we use different units then obviously our results won't be accurate right so this is again the one of the principle which is applicable to sampling sample units must be chosen in a systematic and objective manner so again this is one of the principle of a uh, sampling technique because we need to actually do all the procedures in a systematic and objective manner okay next suppose you want to investigate the working efficiency of nationalized bank in india which one of the following would you follow now a researcher or for example i i want to investigate the working efficiency of nationalized bank in india so for that i need to collect the data okay and for that i need to select the samples so for selecting the sample which sampling technique i need to follow whether i need to follow area sampling whether i need to follow quota sampling or sequential sampling or multi stage sampling so students in such situations i will follow the multi stage sampling so let me explain why so basically multi stage sampling is a sampling technique which is the sub type of cluster sampling technique so here actually uh, the sampling uh, selection or the selection of samples basically occurs based upon uh, different stages okay multiple stages so let me explain how so now here i want to investigate the working efficiency of nationalized bank in india right and that's why i need to identify the nationalized banks in india okay so for example sbi is one of the nationalized bank of india or uh, then again baroda bank is one of the national bank of india okay then punjab national bank is again one of the national bank of india right and here uh, india okay or uh, has lots of population though i know that the population is finite okay but still um, uh, actually here i need to investigate the working efficiency right so whether the population is finite or not uh, won't actually matter over here i need to know the working efficiency only okay and within india there are lots of states yeah, and in each state there are lots of districts there are lots of towns right and and i need to reach every area so firstly what i will do i will uh, you know make the subgroup of india into different states okay then within the different states i will make the subgroups of districts that within the districts i will make subgroups of towns or villages and subsequently i will make the uh, you know uh, i will basically choose the nationalized bank and after that then i will you know investigate the working efficiency of that specific nationalized bank and that's why this technique would be more efficient because by using this technique i can reach the you know each and every nationalized bank in india so that i can investigate their working efficiency more accurately okay that's why i will use this uh, sampling technique which is called as multi stage it is called as multi stage because over here you can see i have uh, selected the samples between the multiple stages like i have made the uh, states okay groups then i have made the groups of districts then at the last i have made the groups of towns or villages okay 
now i have explained you what is area sampling i have explained you what is quota sampling now what is sequential sampling as the name the name suggest over here it is sequential so basically it includes lot of sequences okay uh, for example a uh, researcher uh, whenever researcher don't know exactly whether the particular sampling technique will be feasible or not then in such kind of sampling techniques he will first of all use minimum amount of uh, participants in his or her sampling technique and after that if he uh, you know finds that that particular sampling technique is feasible or whether he is getting a accurate kind of data then after that again then he will select the samples so here researcher basically sequentially selecting the samples all of you getting and that's why here your correct answer should be four that is multi stage sampling technique when a research problem is related to heterogeneous population the most suitable sampling method is now here when there is a heterogeneous population then what type of sampling method a researcher should follow whether it is lottery method whether it is cluster sampling or whether it is stratified sampling or convenient sampling now all of you understood that in such kind of situation you need to follow stratified sampling technique because there is a heterogeneous population which which includes the uh, people who has different characteristics and that's why over here we need to make the subgroups of this uh, heterogeneous population and i am going to select the samples randomly from each subgroup all of you getting okay and that's why whenever there is a heterogeneous population then stratified sampling technique will be more feasible okay what is lottery method so now lottery method is the random sampling technique and in such sampling method we are going to select the uh, numbers randomly and here we are going to assign each number to the subject all of you getting or you are going to assign each number to the each uh, participant okay and accordingly i am going to select such numbers randomly and that's why this is the random sampling technique then all of you understood now cluster sampling then convenient sampling technique is again the non probability sampling technique and here a researcher actually based upon his or her uh, convenience select the samples for example a researcher is in a university okay on a tuesday then he will select the participants who are there in the college on that day only okay then he won't do any other practices over there okay so based upon his or her convenience researcher select the samples and that's why it is called as the convenient sampling technique okay now next which of the following sampling methods is based on probability now here they have asked you exactly which is the sampling technique from these sampling techniques is the probability sampling technique so whether it is quota sampling whether it is stratified sampling whether it is judgment sampling or whether it is convenience sampling okay so now all of you understood that there is only one sampling technique which is stratified sampling technique is it is the probability sampling technique okay and all others are non probability sampling technique so now all of you understood what is quota sampling what is convenience sampling so now let us see what is judgment sampling so judgment sampling technique is also called as the purposive sampling technique so here researcher has a specific purpose towards the participant and that's why he purposively selects that participant only okay in some cases actually researcher wants the more secure or sensitive information and that's why researcher purposively wants those participants only who will be provide that sensitive information to the researcher right and that's why it is called as the judgment or purposive sampling technique which is again the non probability sampling technique and that's why here your correct answer should be 2 so students thank you for watching this session i hope all of you understood everything that i have explained to you but still if you have any doubts you can ask me in the comment box of this video okay